It is a terrible thing to hinder another person's dreams. Especially if that person be God, our Heavenly Father. And we can thwart the dreams of God. We do so when we refuse to do His will. The petition, Thy will be done, is a prayer that the dream of God will be fulfilled on earth as it is in heaven. The dream of God for our life is the perfect will of God which leads us to perfect happiness. But His thoughts are not our thoughts. Neither are His ways our ways. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. In the petition we pray, enable us, our Heavenly Father, to obey Thy revealed will as fully and as joyously as it is done by the angels in heaven. Enable us to do Thy will on the earth. Of course, we should distinguish between the sovereign will of God and His intended will where we have a choice. Sovereign will of God cannot be impeded. God has willed that Christ should die for our sins. God has willed that our ultimate destiny should be heaven. And it does not, we cannot thwart that heaven is. Jesus went away to prepare a place for us. But he has given us a choice. In his sovereign will, he has made us persons of choice rather than robots. And therefore, he wishes, he dreams that we should choose the right way. He's made that way plain. It's made plain in the holy book. For the revealed, the, the revealed will of God in general is recorded from Genesis to Revelation. The tragedy is that most people do not know it. Again and again and again and again. As I talk with persons, I see they have a philosophy of religion, but it did not come from the Word of God. The great tragedy of normal Christianity is that they've accepted the abnormal so long that when the normal comes along, they don't know anything about it. They don't know what is. Because they've accepted absolutely slaughters people. We see no more than a crude letter. And thus, the Bible in our hands is like a razor in the hands of a lunatic. All we can do is cut people to pieces. So, we'd be like those who when the woman was caught in adultery, we would have stoned her. What else? Did not Moses say so? For we did not know his word. We did not know that mercy tempers judgment. We don't know when heaven and earth kiss. And in not knowing this, we frustrate the dream of God for ourselves, for He wants us to be as perfect as He is. I wouldn't say that if the Scriptures didn't say so. He wants us to love as He loves. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's the dream of God for each of us. Now, the will of God is not fatalism. As most of the world's religions speak. And it's no wonder, dear ones, that Mark said that religion is the opium of the people. Because when we were in India the majority of those precious people felt like the open sewers were the will of God. Your standard answer would be, this is the will of God. 
All the flies and the germs and the dung, the will of God. And they, 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 they speak of the will of God as if it were something to resign to rather than something to respond to. They speak in passive tones rather than in active tones. The beauty of Christianity is that God reveals His will in His Word and through the witness of the Holy Spirit in order that we may respond to it, in order that we, the church, the body of Christ, may accomplish His work. Jesus said, I have come to do the will, or my food is to do the will of Him who has sent me and accomplish His work. Would Marx have felt different? Had he known this? Look at communism. It's not all bad or it disintegrate. Oh, I know in, to, to enforce a type of socialism, for it's not true socialism, can't be. There's a lot of different pay levels and a lot of different rewarding schemes and a whole lot of inequities in the communist system, maybe more so than in ours. But... Communism is trying to do something now. And there is a reaction against feudalistic Christianity. There is a reaction against a Christianity that's passive, that will stand by while the will of God is thwarted. When something can be done about it. It is God made us creatures of choice. And so the positive part of communism, and I am not promoting Russian communism. I'm against it. You know good and well I am. But there is a communalism that's acceptable. That's when people get together and live, want to live that way in a group together. They want to See, that's the uh, kibbutz system in Israel. They, they do that voluntarily. They want to level all things, and their motivation is for the state of Israel. Their motivation is for the betterment of Israel. That has its validity, although it has its serious drawbacks when it's tried. When you try to enforce it and try to give all people nationalistic motivation. For there is a reason for the profit motive. There is a reason for rewards. And I remind you that heaven is full of rewards. Based on your work here on the face of this earth. But communism sees that something should be done now. How much more should we who are part of Christianity... And you see, that's a lot of the battle between liberalism and conservatism in the United States today. It's a lot of it. Of course, I know that unless our hearts are changed, we really make no lasting effect, no lasting change on this earth. But I do know that if we accept what should not be accepted as the will of God, when that's merely fatalism that we create an injustice. We create a hell on earth for people instead of a heaven for earth, a heaven on earth. And he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Perhaps reviewing Sister Wagner's uh, vision of heaven, her look into heaven a few days ago might help us here for it seemed that the newness and the, the multifacetedness or the different facet of her view brought us to our feet to ask God to cleanse us and help us. What did she see? She saw that Christ was saying to her, and Jesus was saying to her, Vera, you can have the same peace on earth that his, that's in heaven. Now you and I know that that boggles our mind. That's what he told her. And, and the Lord taught us to pray, Thy will be done on earth. The Greek really says epi, on, upon earth. Stephen's telling me about a preacher making a big issue over it being in earth because our translations, translations read in earth. And he preached the whole sermon against saying on earth. He said the Bible says in earth. Well, at this point, the King James translation is less than accurate. And I believe the King James translation to be the most anointed translation ever in all of history. 
I, it be, fellas, it just reminds me, it behooves us to be careful what we preach on. I remember Dr. Blackwelder telling me about uh, an old black man preaching on the peasel tree. I don't even know what the thing is, but he found a word in Scripture that he thought was the peasel, and he preached on the peasel tr- tree, and he, and he built the ark with the peasel tree, and he, he did all things, he built the temple with the peasel tree, and he came on up, and Christ died on the peasel tree, whatever that was. But he had misread the translation somewhere and got him a sermon on the peasel tree. <laughs> No, it says on earth. May thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. May God's reign be manifested on earth. Now, hmm, certainly it begins in us. Takes me back to my boyhood days. Lord, send a revival. That's thy will, thy reign. Lord, send a revival. Lord, send a revival. And let it begin in me. God wants to actualize his will through you and through me. It's the dream of God. But I want to say something sad. For the most part, his dream will never be realized. Few people will ever enter the kingdom of heaven. And yet it's his will. Not his sovereign will, but it's it's his will that we should choose of our own accord to do that which is best for our own lives. So the will of God is not fatalism, but the will of God is something that we should respond to for God knows what's best for our life. The will of God does not refer to accepting the inevitable. It speaks of actualizing the possible. And it is not resignation, it is response. They tell me that Nehru, only 3 to 4% of the Indian nation was Christianity, but that Nehru wanted the Christians. Why? Because the Christian religion taught that God's will was to correct the the inequities not to resign to them. And yet Hinduism is just the opposite. This is God's will. Cannot change your class. Cannot change your position. Cannot change any why. It is God's will. That is not the word of our Christ. That is not the word of Scripture. Now I want to share this with you. The love of God And the will of God is inseparable. Should I say are inseparable? Inseparable. You cannot separate the love of God from the will of God. Now, I want you, I'm hitting at something very vital here for you. Because in most of our minds, there's a difference. We can accept and hear and believe of the love of God, but we have a negative reaction to the will of God. And yet they're the same. The very same. There's no difference between the love of God and the will of God for one's life. It's all the same. We're like little children. And they owe me sick with 102 degrees of fever. So that necessitates aspirin to keep the fever from going higher. Fortunately, she's not a child that resents it, but there are children that will not take the will, just will not take aspirin. Now, why do you insist upon it? It's the parent's will. It's also the love of the parent. It's the same way with him. His love is always his will, and his will is always his love. He has dreams for us. Some of the great men of history have realized that the dreams of God were just exactly what they needed. Frank Lobach experienced a great disappointment. And then when he resigned, now this is a resignation here, to the will of God or responded and actualized God's dreams rather than his own. And if our dreams contradict God's dreams, 
then our dreams are false because his dreams are perfect for us. And Laubach said, along with other great writers, who've ex- uh, great living men of God who have experienced this, ah, oh, what they really wanted was found in God's will. What they really, what really satisfied their soul was the acceptance of the will of God. Now, we'll share something with you. Other than that, don't you think for me to share this one thing is worth a whole warning? The love of God is the same as the will of God for your life. It's beautiful, it's tender, it's perfect. And it's because of that love that he makes his will known. So often, we think of the Lord's Prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane as being our prayer. In my opinion, it can never rightfully be our prayer. Stephen, I've thought about this for months now. And this morning, I have something to say about it. Not because I've read anything. All I've read to you now, for the, nearly everything I've read to you now, has been just what I wrote down when I, after I've studied and put my, my notes that I've written down are on a legal pad. So I came to the office and began to write the outline of what I thought I might say to you. His prayer in the garden was unique, one and only of its kind. You can't identify with Jesus there. Hmm. Not one other time did he ever say it. Not my will, but thine be done. That wasn't the that wasn't the word of his life. The commandments of the Lord are joyous. But in this cake, in this case, his response was unique. Why? Because the will of God, even by his own agreement, was that he should come and die for our sins. That wasn't, nothing wrong with that. But that your sins should be put upon him that was pure and that he should be separated from his father. Was terrible agony. And it was, in, it was in drops of blood that he prayed such a prayer. You have no right to pray such a prayer. Because to pray such a prayer, hmm, are, are you with me? This is a unique prayer. Are you with me? His will should all be always be joyous unless you're taking the sins of humanity which separate you from God himself. Then you can pray, not my will, but thine be done. Other than that, his commandments should be joyous. The Bible says so. It's a unique prayer. It is not our prayer. It's the prayer of the Messiah, the Holy One of God, who came and was separated from the love of his Father. You and I never have to be separated. It's not our prayer. If our will is not his will, then our will is wrong. And we should die and be crucified to our will. For it is not God's dream for us. It is not fulfillment for us. It is not good for us. It will never work. But if he calls upon you to die for humanity which causes God to turn his back on you, you may pray, not my will, but thine be done. That's not written in a book. And all the preachers can call me to task if I'm not in truth. But as I look at it, I thought of it for weeks and for weeks and for months and for months. I never found that he ever prayed such a prayer. Did you ever find it anymore? No. His, his food, his joy was to do the will of God. But how could he say that it is my will to be separated from his father? David, I never saw it written in the book. I said, this prayer is unique. This prayer is unique. Oh, when I think how he went and prayed and how how he sweat as if it were great drops of blood and he went to find a little comfort, none. Then he went back and he prayed again, praying the same prayer, praying the same prayer three times. Not my will, but thine be done. So don't let the theme of your life be not my will, but thine be done. Forget it. Let your theme be, God, I love your will. 
And if my will conflicts with yours, let my will be dashed against the rocks that I may have what I really need, what really brings fulfillment to my life. Well, somebody can say, man, we can go home. It wouldn't have been worth our being here. I marvel that Jesus would ever show me such a thing. I marvel at that. Didn't I tell you fellows weeks ago? I'm looking at this passage. I'm puzzled by this. I said, how can the will of Christ ever be in conflict with His Heavenly Father? There's got to be something unique here. Well, it's obvious when you think about it. He was always, that was His food, that was His meat, that was His drink, that was His joy, the will of His Father. His will was always identified with His Father's, but how could He ever choose for God's back to be turned upon Him? It's unique. Therefore, it's not a good prayer for us unless we're repentant of our carnality and we want to get past that so we can say, Oh, God, to do Thy will. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't feel like everybody's with me, but I feel like the angels are with me. That's deep. That's deep. That's why people can't get with that. That's a deep statement. I never read it in the yeah, book. Yeah, it's wonderful. I told hey, you, you fellows weeks ago, while, I said, men, I said, men, I'm so puzzled over yeah. this. How can Jesus yeah. will? He's the Godhead. They always yes, think the same way. How can it be different? Yeah. It was in His humanity, yeah. which He came to identify Himself with us. His sins, our sins were placed upon Him. But the great awful thing was that He was separated as if forever from God's presence. Yes. And you and I never have to experience such a thing. Through Jesus. It is the dream of God that perfect peace and harmony reign upon the earth. God dreamed, He dreamed, and He spoke His dream. And His will was fulfilled, and creation was in perfect harmony. Let me show you something with you. This is so great. I'm having such a great time. I know it's going to be like this. He made all those precious animals. And He made Adam and Eve. And they all knew each other perfectly. And there was perfect peace and perfect harmony. God's dream. God's dream. Boy, the lion didn't eat the lamb. And the snake didn't bite the child. Mm -mm. The child in creation could put his hand in the snake's hole. Everything would be all right. God's dream. Sin entered in and we began to misunderstand each other. And Adam blamed Eve. And Eve blamed Adam. And Cain was jealous. And the peace and the harmony was dispelled. And then they didn't know each other anymore. You see, when I really know you, I love you. Did you know that anyone I really know and I really know I, I love, I can't speak against? So I want to know everyone potentially. I want to know they're like me. I want to know that they're God's child. And on principle, if not in fact, act that way. But if you really know someone and you really love someone, you don't say anything. No, you don't. No, you don't. And you're ready to defend. In, in, in the Garden of Eden, all animals knew each other and there was no fear. Animals didn't have anything to fear from man. But after sin, there was fear. After, after Noah, there was fear. God put fear into the animals. No wonder, Stephen, they've been yearning for the resurrection. No wonder, no wonder they've been yearning for restoration. They can't even get along with, their, with the dream of God for them because of our sin. It's infected the very animals, the very trees, the very life of creation. And so it says that they earnestly groaned to be restored. When two persons fulfill the dream of God, that is when they agree, they can ask anything they want to, and it shall be granted to them. Two persons that really agree are in perfect harmony with each other 
are so perfectly joined together. They love each other and they know each other. They know heart's intent and love, even when those are, there's faults because in humanity there always is. There is such love that it covers all that multitude of faults. Now Jesus said those two persons may ask what they will and it will be given to them. He also said following that, in that context, where two or three gather together like this, he said, I'm in their midst. I'm there. I'm there. God wants you and I to be like it was intended in creation. Thy will be done on earth like in the Garden of Eden as it was in creation. Perfect harmony. Perfect understanding. And if you don't, do it on principle. Because, friends, you and my, you and my minds are so damaged that unless we have an answer, sometimes we're given to judgment. I know a lot of things that I can't tell, but if I were to tell, you would stop your judging. Why should I have to tell it? Why should I have to be required to give explanations? I'm talking about people's lives. Oh, I pray that the perfect peace and harmony of creation, that the will of God may come upon this community of faith so that all who are in need may come in, even as they did in Athens and in Corinth of old. And where God purified himself of peculiar people, brought into himself a peculiar people, and the will of God was being done on earth. That is, it was progressively coming to pass as it was in heaven. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm, I'm so thrilled with this. The rich young ruler thwarted the dream of God for himself. Oh, listen to this. God knew what was best for him. God knew that his riches were standing in his way. And he said, get rid of your riches. And he refused to do it. I want you to know, before I get down to the essence of this, I want you to know how Jesus responded to him. Now, this is perfect creation, the way Jesus responded to him. He went away sadly. And what did Jesus do? He said he loved him. After he rejected the will of God, he loved him. He loved him. He loved him. He rejected it. He loved him. That's the will of God. Who knows, my friends, but what that love of Jesus, when he rejected, brought him back at a later date. Who knows, but what after the Savior was crucified, dead, and, and resurrected, who knows, but what the light of the gospel came unto him and he gave all willingly. I do know this. The dream of God was that he should give up something that was barring his soul from full of fellowship with God in order that he might be clear with God. And then you know what the witness is. God would have given it back to him for a foe. Not everybody say, Brother, how do you know that? Well, by the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. The Lord revealed this some years ago. Had he given it up, that doesn't mean that he would do that for everyone. It might not be the dream of God for you. It might not help you. You might be four times in trouble. If you give up and God gives it back four times, that might give you four times of trouble. Some things he takes away never to give back. Why? Though they'd be good things. Because we can't handle them. The dream of God. God loses most of his dreams with reference to us. But he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is the will of God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. His will is revealed in His written word, yet most are ignorant. His will is revealed through His spoken word, the witness, yet most refuse to wait 
and to listen. I believe that the key to doing the will of God is in the mind. It's in what we think. Look at Romans 12, 1 and 2. Would you? Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. By the renewing of the mind, that we, that the New English Bible says, that we may be able to discern the will of God. Now let me tell you something about the Greek here. I do believe with all my heart that we may pray, as the English was rendered here, that something may be good or acceptable or perfect. I believe, and the Holy Spirit may witness on that. But as far as the Greek construction is concerned, there is no division in the adjectives. David, you probably know that very well. That you may prove the will of God, and the will of God is not good, some acceptable and some... No, the will of God is good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, as the Greek says, well-pleasing and perfect. It means that is the nature of the will of God. That's the Greek construction. It doesn't mean that we can't, that some people may be led to pray and God may witness that there's different areas of the will of God. We know there's permissible will of God. We know that. That God may include something that might, might be not ultimate perfection. He may allow something. I'm not saying that, that you can't pray that way, but as far as the Greek is concerned here, if we have our minds renewed, we, then we may discern the will of God, and the will of God is good, well-pleasing, and perfect. It's period. This is not adjectives to be divided. The will of God is good, well-pleasing, and perfect. Now, I quote the Greek scholars on this rather than myself. Then you remember that wonderful scripture that says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Maybe we better turn to Philippians 2, 5. And also the 15th verse. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Thirteenth verse. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Hmm. We just prayed in the Lord's Prayer, as far as our messages are concerned, Thy kingdom come. Now we're praying and studying, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where the kingdom of God comes, it results in His will, but the reverse is true. Where the will of God is done, the kingdom comes. I don't know which comes first. For one writer says that the will of God is the means to bringing the kingdom of God on earth. I do know this. It's the means of Christ reigning in our heart. He cannot reign unless we do his will. I know this also. That he wants to come in the perfect glory and the wonder of his kingdom. So that it may be fulfilled as was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. And I am so thrilled with this passage this morning that I am delighted to share it with you today. More in its context. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The Spirit of counsel and might. The Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And shall make, of, make him of a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes. Neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. That's so tremendous there, my friends. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor. 
and reproof with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. The wolf shall also dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. And their young ones shall lie down together. And the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of the ass. And the weaned child shall put his hand upon the cockatrice den. They shall not hurt. Put their, they shall play around the snake hole or put their hand in the den, and they shall not be hurt, nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, and as the waters cover the sea. Bob, that's an awful powerful statement for the millennium. I don't need the rest of you crucify me over that. He knows it and I know it. It's also a powerful statement for the new heavens and the new earth that our God speaks about when Christ shall reign supreme. See, there's a dream in the mind of God and it's going to take place. You and I want to be part of it. For you that might misunderstand me, I, I am all millennial in doctrine and I believe that when he comes again, we shall be caught up to be with him forever. But I pastor a precious people who are Christian like some of the rest of you who believe there should be a kingdom of on earth. And if you've not heard me before, I must say at this time that we all get together in what we call pan, um, pan millennium. We know it's going to pan out in the end. And we're not fighting in this place. But one thing we are praying together, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And when, when the Garden of Eden was here, I should back up and say I'm really not all millennial. I've backed off of that. I've backed off of all eschatology and I'm trusting Jesus. And brother, if Christ comes on a white horse, look for me, be on a horse pretty close behind him. Yes, sir. And if he's going to reign, I'm going to reign with him. That's what the Bible says. The wonderful thing is that, however, the dream of God shall be fulfilled and the wolf and the lion shall lie down together. That's where his will is done. He said, that's the way it is in heaven. He says, let... Let the will. You say, well, Brother Hogan, there's no animals in heaven. Then where did those animals come from that were let down out of heaven to Peter on the sheet? <laughs> they didn't come from hell, I promise you. <laughs> now, I'm being facetious because I don't have any answer and never willing to say dogmatically there are animals in heaven, but I just thought I'd give you food for thought. See, I can sometimes feel those thoughts in there. Boy, it just hit me like that. Because you and I are sometimes majoring more on our ideologies and our differences rather than on the very subject of this man. Why, Jesus would come to the pool of Bethesda and he would heal a man and they'd say, you shouldn't do that on the Sabbath day. What they should have had was a great cat meeting over the man being healed. We've got people like that everywhere. They can't have a camp meeting because they're too filled with meanness. If God's mind was within us, we wouldn't be like that. For God has allowed us to know the secret of his plan, and it is this. The purposes in his sovereign will that all human history shall be consummated in Christ, that everything that exists in heaven and on earth shall find its perfection and fulfillment in him. Ephesians 1, 9, and 10. God is a dreaming God. And he has a dream for you and for me. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. So his dream is perfect for us. 
but we thwart it so often. Sometimes because we cannot tell that the will of God is also the love of God. But remember this, only those who do his will shall enter the kingdom of heaven. So said Jesus, not long after he said these words. The title of the sermon, The Dream of Our Heavenly Father. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Shall we stand? Thank you, O Lord, I pray, for letting me share these exciting and beautiful thoughts and for letting me read out of thy precious word. Thank you that Isaiah saw your dream and printed it on paper. Place it, O oh God, in our hearts today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I love thy kingdom, Lord. Timothy Dwight, president of Yale University, some years ago wrote a song that's one of the favored in Christendom. Would you turn to it, whatever number it is? 448. Tonight, I would love for you to prepare your hearts ahead of time with the Word of God <clears throat> and the Scripture comes from the book of Matthew. Gentlemen, you have to help me. Someone, you helped me find the other day. As you would that men do to you, do you also them. The seventh chapter of Matthew, beginning with the seventh verse going through the twelve. Tonight, would you read that? And I'm trusting the Lord will help me to share with you what I shared with the children of Tays Valley Christian School. It ends with the golden rule, as you would that men do to you, do you also to them. Audience, would you be seated while the pianist is playing? May we meditate upon this message in our hearts.
Heavenly Father, we've anointed these two at their request. And how sound that is according to the will of God that has been revealed through the Apostle James. There be any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church. Let him be anointed with oil. Oh, my Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that all who are saints of thine, all who have been cleansed of God, even if it's in the last few moments, for sainthood begins at the prayer of confession. We pray together that you'll bring healing to this precious husband and wife. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us an opportunity to love them. Thank you, Lord, for their response to us. Now we pray, Lord, for all needs in every way. Be well, be whole, be healed. Be delivered in Christ's name. And let from heaven above and from heaven in the church, let the power of God, the bomb of Gilead, even Jesus Christ our Lord, touch your lives now and forever. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Jesus and sometimes they were healed as they went may the blessed power of Jesus fall upon them gentlemen would you, elders would you come down and stand with me please what I've said this morning according to Stephen's been revolutionary and uh, perhaps you'll have to abide on it a while but Steve can tell you that for me to have the victory today Here's a great thing. Yes, it is. It's a great and wonderful thing That's right. for my father and I, myself, to have the victory of Jesus. Yes. And uh, my experiences this week have caused me to love people more. That's right. My failings and my shortcomings has pointed out to me, have caused me, or my being misunderstood, it's caused me to love you more. I said, Jesus, I want to get there Sunday so I can love everybody because they've been patient with me and precious with me. Now, I cannot, where God really speaks, I have to let the word lie. And if I were to try to come in and soften it when he wants it straight in there, I would be out of order. As far as the love of my heart and the mind of my heart, um, and of you to me, it should be one of such a relationship that we're brothers and sisters because we do the will of God. And Daddy, while you were speaking, I thought, oh, Daddy, it's wonderful to have three boys doing the will of God, or four boys doing the will of God. You spoke of three, preaching and teaching the Word. Yes. But, Daddy, the real thing that makes us brothers or makes us your sons mm -hmm. and makes us a family is doing the will of God. Yes, that's a higher order, yes. and that's a higher family. Yes. 